Carlos, you've just been with the players. What have you had to say to them? Uh, we just spoke about the game. I asked them what they thought in relation to the game. I thought it was a decent game today. Obviously, we were on the wrong end of a result. And it was a common feedback of we can't give easy goals to a, obviously they got a top striker in Jamie McLaren we know that and when you gift a goal after five minutes it's it's never going to be easy so we're going through a period at the moment the last three days where we have to earn our goals we have to earn our chances and we are doing that but we're giving them away too easy How big of a setback has the last few days been back to back losses at, at home? Yeah it's disappointing without a doubt you know there's no point in hiding away from it because you know we could have been with two wins you're in a good position you know but two defeats and everyone thinks it's the end of the world. What I'll say is we're the same team as we were four days ago. You know, let's not ca get carried away here and I won't get carried away. But you can't defend like that. We're in professional sports here and you can look for excuses. Um, you can make excuses. I won't do that. I think individually we need to be better. Collectively we need to be better. Um, but we have defended very well at times. But in the moments, we've just not been good enough. The penalty was controversial. Your thoughts on that? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, yeah, let me phrase this the right way, because we've had a couple of those this year, we've had a couple of incidents, I think in the first game or second game we played and we were given a penalty and then it was intervened and it wasn't given and we had the head of the referees down to us, because um, I wanted to speak to him about a number of incidents, not just this year, but in previous years and he was good he was very good and he told us everything probably I want to hear but and this is where the but comes in the clear and obvious we talk about you know there's a there's a decision today and referee stood seven yards away and um, the VAR gets involved so is it clear and obvious it has to be 100% which was stated it was not 100% so again I'll call him tomorrow and he'll tell me the same thing and he'll tell me what I want to hear. And It's actually, and I said this to the fourth official, I've been in the game a long time, as most football people have. Kenny Miller's the same. I'm a little bit older than him. It's actually making me not enjoy football. Uh, and that's a shame. So that's my thought on the VAR decision. I saw you talking to James about it when he came up. What did I did, yeah. He said he, he just tried to block the ball, which is a football movement, which we get told all the time. And as you jump, naturally, I've never met a football player to jump with no arms. Um, again, you know, there's been numerous occasions. I watched a game last week and I know I'm veering off on different tangents here, but where someone caught the ball and it wasn't a yellow card and then someone clotheslined someone around the neck and it wasn't a yellow card and then there's a red card and I'm like and I feel sorry for the managers I really do I'm not feeling sorry for myself today but I'm feeling sorry for Jimmy because it's hit I think it's actually hit his leg before it's his, his arm and there was a there was an incident early on in the season at Newcastle where someone cleared it against their own arm and it's not a penalty so I, I just don't know but it's starting to make me not enjoy it which is a shame because as you said after 25 years in the game it's like whoa, disappointing what do you think? Uh, you don't need to answer. There you go. I won't. I won't put you on that. Yeah. Well, it does. That, that's that's the thing. It does, and that's the problem we have. You know, and the people making these decisions have got to understand the game, and that's why there's always that remit of players maybe becoming referees because they understand situations. Because clearly, I don't think situations are getting understood at the moment, week in week out, which is disappointing. Uh, on a bit more of a positive note, Daniel yeah. Mulmering. Yeah. Yeah. He's been very good uh, and he's shown a lot of confidence. He's trained hard um, prior to his first game. I think he's played three games now and in a row. He's been full of confidence. He's he's worked his way back. He's actually hit rock bottom because when you do your ACL, it's the end of the world. So he's managed to get through that. He's seen light at the end of the tunnel and he's getting his rewards now by playing very, very well. So um, he needs to continue to do that. There, there are positives. You know, whenever you lose, it's easy to look at the penalty decision or the, the mistake in the first half that we gave after five minutes. But I look at the, the performances of Wilmer and, and Tommy. I thought they were excellent. I thought Nata, again, was exceptional. Um, you know, so we've got three young players there in those defensive positions, even though we've conceded two goals that are uh, steadily progressing. Good. 
Thanks. Um, Carl, just on the handball, did you say yeah. um, that it hit James's leg first? Or did James say that it hit his leg? Yeah, James just said that he... Ju- he James... You actually couldn't see that on the on the camera. There's only one angle of the incident. Yeah, well, I was fortunate because it came up on the big thing. And again, the, the, the players on the pitch speak to the referee, but the <laughs> the reasoning you get is, is just... I don't know. Sometimes I think they're playing the opposite game because the reason is totally different to what you get told and then what's reported. So uh, to be fair, you ask players because you trust players and and yes, they're trying to get away with it. If it's Jimmy's arm and he's put his arm out, then it's a penalty. But he's jumped and he turned his back. So I don't know. Maybe he's elastic man uh, if that's a penalty. I don't know. But not not in my time. Okay. Um, Just overall on the performance, um, did you think you guys would be further along with some things of some aspects of the game than, than you are at this point of the season particularly defensively yeah well it's 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 an interesting it's a really good question that because you know you can look at it nine ten games in and uh, we we've defended very very well I think people spoke about in the first seven games we hadn't conceded a goal from open play which was a real positive and we were missing lo- lots and lots of chances then the chances come around and you score like four goals in two games and you're looking very positive, but then you start opening yourself up a little bit at the back, and we conceded five goals in two games. So then people start asking you, well, defensively, you're you're a little bit behind where you want to. Uh, but it depends which way you want to look at it. I look at it, we've been very poor defensively over the last two games. That's as a team. That's not just defenders, because we defend from the front and we attack from the back. There's been very good passages of play. In between both boxes, I think we're, we're very, very good. You know, sometimes probably we can be more direct at times. And when we are more direct, we get chances. So it's finding the balance of that. But it doesn't matter what you do in between the boxes. If you defend like that and you concede goals and, you know, it's a square ball on the edge of our box. And Keanu knows... You know, he, in the first five minutes, he shouldn't do that. But it was the lead up to that, the, you know, the little combination with Ziggy and him that gives the, uh, arguably the top goal scorer, I think he was last year or near about, um, half a chance. Uh, he doesn't miss, players don't miss. So again, it, it's resetting. We need to earn our shot, earn our goals. We gave two away today, which was disappointing. But there are positives. Um, but obviously, I don't want to talk about the positives today because we've lost 2-0. Um you're right in terms of the discrepancy between your, your good and your bad performances as a team. Yeah. It's a little bit up and down um, <laughs> in, in recent weeks. So, I mean, do, do you know why that is? Or can you put your finger on why um, things, certain things dip and certain things go up? Or is that just simply the rhythm of a football season sometimes? Yeah, listen, I don't think... Oh, well. You know, if I say I don't think any team, you'll, you'll say Man City win 20 games in a row. But for the last two years, they probably haven't done that. So it, I th- it's normal. I think you look at the league in general um, and specifically this league, then there are you go through peaks and valleys, don't you? And you go through ups and downs and you say that you have a week of losing three games in a row and you feel on the bottom of the world and you win three games in a row and you feel on top. You know, it's important you keep an even keel. It's important you continue the process, you're progressing. There's lots of good stuff that have come out of these two defeats that I'll I'll take on board but there's also areas we need to improve in and by the way before these two games I wasn't fooled that we didn't have areas to improve you know sometimes when you win or you draw it gets massed over you know I'm under no illusions what areas we need to strengthen but we're in a salary cap league and sometimes you can't strengthen what you want in the short term so you have to go with it and you have to work with it and the players have responded very well uh, but we are a little bit inconsistent at the moment but that takes training time that tra- takes training work and that that takes you learning and we certainly will learn as we go along Adrian anything from you? Yeah Carl very quickly uh, you gave Jordan much some minutes today and obviously I think it's the first real opportunity for you how did you assess his performance and uh, where is he in terms of his state of fitness at the moment? Yeah well you know, everyone talks about the squad I have, and I, ha- I have built a, a very good mini squad in a short period of time. I know that. Um, but we have got players that aren't probably fully fit to be able to play. So I get asked this question a lot about trying to keep players happy. A lot of the players aren't fully fit. Much he's not fully fit. He hasn't played too many games over the last year. He come in, he went into quarantine. Uh, he trained literally seven or eight days, and I threw him on for 30 minutes. So it will take time. Um, Duke is a little bit different you know Bernie as well Bernie's not fully up to speed and, and Bruce is not fully match fit either so these players at the moment are making impacts which is important but I thought much he was good I thought he showed his quality uh, it's never easy coming on at half time especially when you're losing a game um, but 
he, he did what he needed to do. I thought he showed quality and he'll continue to grow. But he's, he's certainly got quality, the boy. And you've certainly stuck, uh, stuck that there with Coxie. I know there's more to him than just being a goal scorer. He's a link man as well there, is it? Any sense of frustration for him that he's just got the one goal this season? Yeah, I think if you ask Coxie, Coxie will have wanted to, score, sc- wanted to have scored more goals. You know, strikers uh, go through... You know, I, I don't know the mindset of a striker, to be honest, because that wasn't me but I'm assuming that they go through runs and and things like that and they can look at certain areas. Coxie's a very good link man for us. We played with two up front, him and Juki, because they know each other very well and the combination's been good. Last week we went with Bernie, I think, and Kawami. Um, So we've got options there and it's the, it's the, the pairing that finds the right rhythm and, you know, gets into a rhythm. You know, but Coxie will probably want to score more goals. But having said that, it doesn't matter if he, he has had chances. I will say that. Um, we've spoke about it. He works on it every day. He's just got to continue to be in the right areas and something will drop for him. But, you know, it doesn't matter whether you score one goal or two goals. If you defend like we defend at the moment, you're not going to win games. So it's a, it's a team uh, mentality. We need to shift a little bit. And last one for me, just in terms of um, health wise, do you have anyone to come back or did anybody get a knock tonight at all? Uh, no, I um, Nikolai was struggling before the game, which is why he was he was off the bench uh, again. Kawami, I just changed it because I wanted Juki to get an hour. I think he had 45, 35 minutes or forty minutes on the weekend, um, so it's building up his game time. and And when we get our players fully fit, um, then I'll have some nice decisions to make. Um, that includes the defenders. You know, Tass is on his way back. Patrick's on his way back in the next week or so as well. So um, hopefully, you know, we'll, it'll give me options because at the moment we're very bare on the defenders um, but the defenders that we've got you know are doing very very well but we just got to clean up the moments which we're conceding goals with